So now let's do part three of the lectures on international trade. We're going to continue with the demand and supply model of international trade, but now we're going to look at a country that is going to export. Again, trying to map things with the Ricardian model and figure what matches up with what. Remember that if a country has the comparative advantage in a good, then it has a lower opportunity cost of producing it than other countries do. And another way of thinking about that is that the price of the good would be low in the domestic market before trade. Once sellers have the opportunity to sell on the world market, they're going to pull their supplies off the world market and sell them on the pull their supplies off the domestic market and sell them on the world market for that higher price, and that's going to cause prices to rise in the domestic market as there's less being supplied. This is going to keep on happening till the domestic price rises to the world price. So, a country is going to export if this world price is above its autarky price. And in the process of beginning exports, the domestic price is actually going to rise up to that world price. Notice again, to find the quantity supplied and quantity demanded, to find the quantity supplied, we look at where this world price hits the domestic supply curve. So this is our quantity supplied, the amount that domestic suppliers are making. And taking that price again, and looking where it hits the demand curve, that's going to tell us our domestic quantity demanded. So that's the amount that U.S. consumers, say for instance, actually want to buy. The difference here, the amount that's supplied in excess of domestic demand, is the total amount of exports here. Before, we looked at the effects of imports on consumer welfare and producer welfare, and we can do the same again. In the absence of trade, we would have prices equal to PA, prices under autarky. So consumer surplus would ev be everything above PA and below the demand curve. So it would be area W plus X. Consumer surplus before trade was everything below the price and above the supply curve. So it's this area Y here. Once trade opens up and sellers are able to export, they now get this price, this world price here, this higher world price. So their producer surplus is everything below this world price and above the supply curve. So their new producer surplus is X plus Z plus Y. X used to be part of consumer surplus, but it is now part of producer surplus. So while producers have gained X and Z, from an overall societal point of, point of view, X was just a transfer, essentially, from consumers to producers. So the total net gain for society as a whole is this area Z here. Going and carrying through our example here, let's think about trying to compute what the area of the new consumer surplus triangle would be. So before we looked at what the old pre-trade consumer surplus and producer surplus would be. Now we're going to go ahead and look at it with trade. So again, consumer surplus is the area above the price and below the demand curve. So it has height, P max, minus PW, and it has length, QD. So if we sort of look back to our earlier numbers and our earlier example, we're going to use the same intersect here on the vertical axis. I've chosen a world price that's $90 instead of, if I remember right, $80. And quantity demanded is 35 instead of 50. So we go through all the math, all that, and that. And we find that now consumer surplus is $525, whereas it was $1,000 without trade. We can do the same thing with producer surplus we can try and figure out what's the area of that new producer surplus triangle. So that triangle has height of PW minus P min. So this line segment here is the height and it has width or length of QS. So it goes all the way out to here. So this whole triangle here 
that encompasses x, z, and y. So we go ahead and go through the math on that. And we notice though, per, though world price is the same as in the consumer surplus example, the P min is different than P max, of course, and the quantity is different as well. It was 35 for consumer surplus and it's 65 for the producer surplus calculation. And we go through all the math on that and we find out that the new level of producer surplus is 1787.50 whereas it was 11.25 without trade.